I'm a war gamer. I am. Yeah, I'm. I'm a war gamer. Mm -hmm. Greetings, boys and gits, and welcome to Dread War Gaming. Today, I'm going to do a video response to Spud of Chilling War Gaming's I'm a War Gamer, or I am a War Gamer, which is basically a sort of community driven uh, idea where basically people are putting out a video telling their story about why they're a war gamer, why they're into YouTube. Basically there's a bunch of four questions that you've got to answer and then you've got to nominate three other people in the community to do a video the same, you know, basically. So the four questions that Spud has uh, laid out for us all to do are what got you into war gaming and the hobby, you know, what got you into it, uh, what got you into YouTube and video production and where would you like to see your channel in the next five years? Lastly, any advice that you'd give to a noob that was starting out on YouTube? So those are the four things that are being asked. Now, I was nominated by G the Hyper Sapien, or G the Hyper Sapien. He's my man down under. He's actually from England, but he moved down under, so he lives in Australia. Now, if you haven't checked out G's channel, go and check it out. He will be linked in the description, as will of course, the three people that I'm going to nominate. So before I go on about my own answers to those questions, I'm going to nominate three people. Three people I'm nominating are Roxy the Riveter, number one. So Roxy is a fantastic scratch builder. She's a great personality. She's always taking part in the community, pulling the piss, having fun with us. That's what we like, really. She's a dedicated member, as is, of course, Big Mech Dan Skull, who was the first other YouTuber to reach out to me in any kind of collaborative form off the back of my very first video. So Dan's been there since the beginning. So I want to nominate Big Mac Dan Skull and also my co-host of the four war bosses, the uh, war bosses of the apocalypse, uh, the Hobby Gear, um, because he's always got a thing or two to say and I'm sure he could, he could do a pretty long uh, monologue for one of these. So I know we've already covered these things in the War Bosses episodes in a kind of way, but I nominate the Hobby Git as well. So that's my three nominations out of the way. Uh, thanks again to G for nominating me. Uh, G's been watching my channel for a good long time. He's been part of the community, very active in the community. Um, so yeah, and he's got his own channel now. So big up G. So as for the first question, what got me into the hobby or what got me into war gaming? Well, I grew up as a kid, like many other kids, with lots of little plastic toy soldiers and Lego. And I used to you know, do battles between them and my monster in my pockets and all my different dinosaurs and everything. They'd be like pitch battles, good goodies versus baddies, that sort of thing. Um, and so they all used to get involved. And so I used to be into that sort of thing. I had a Spitfire Airfix model above my bed that me and my dad made together. I think I had a Hurricane as well. Um, so I was already tuned into the idea of like, you know, playing war and building miniature kits. And then one day, my dad picked me up at a boot fair, a bag full of these metal soldiers. He just thought they were just metal soldiers. He's like, yeah, look, I got you a bag of these metal soldiers. Didn't pay much for them. And they were all high elves, loads and loads of metal high elves, loads of them with the swords up and I can't remember them anymore, but there was loads of them, some with shields as well, loads of them. So I basically uh, took these to school and I was like showing my friends. I was like, look what I got, look, I got these really cool metal soldiers. And they weren't painted. There was one or two maybe that had a touch of paint on them, but that was about it. I don't think they had any undercoat. I think they'd just gone straight on with some color. So they mostly all chipped off what there was anyway. Um, and I took them in and my friends were like, whoa, a few of us, a few of the friends, they knew what it was. They're like, oh, that's Warhammer. Oh, I've got some of that. So there's actually a kid up the road that I used to play with all the time, uh, Ryan. Uh, he was actually, funny enough, he's, uh, he was an Irish. Well, he was born in England, but he was Irish. Um, and uh, yeah, we used to, I used to go up and play with him quite a lot. So I was surprised, I didn't know he had Warhammer. He showed me in his room and he showed me his like, um, oh, what did he play? I can't remember what he played now. 
Yeah, he played a couple of different armies, I'm not sure. Uh, it was mostly Warhammer though, because me and him were both into sort of fantasy battles and stuff like that at the time. You know, we did castles in Lego and pirate ships and stuff. And we used to go up the field and play like battles and stuff, you know, and have wars with the local kids with over tree houses and all that sort of stuff. He sort of showed me his, and then this other lad, Dave Farmer, the farmer, uh, he had an Eldar army, and I looked at his Eldar army, and I was like, whoa, like space army, really cool. So I sort of got interested. I went to uh, a games workshop, and I peered through the window, and I looked at all those models in the glass cabinets, and I was like, oh, whoa. And I went in, and I saw the prices, and I was like, whoa. I mean, I was from a poor family. I was like, oh, geez, I can't afford this shit. Like, but I really want to do this. I really... so. You know, I just thought, you know, it's one of these sort of things where you can start small, you know. It seemed that way to me anyway at the time. So I bought sort of just some small boxes, some squads, and a couple of basic paints and that. Um, but that's basically how I got started. And then, of course, I got started on Orcs later on when Gorka Morka came out. That's when I made my 40k, full 40k transition. It was Gorka Morka inspired it because there was now cool Orcs. And uh, I'd always been attracted to them, but I just didn't like the models before that so much. So. I know a lot of people like the second head look, and there are some that look cool, but on the whole, the army didn't look all that great. But after Gorka Morka, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I love this. So I changed to Orcs. Question number two is what got you into YouTubing? What got you started in YouTubing? So for me, um, I was watching a lot of YouTube myself during the times of 7th edition. I'm trying to get my head around the rules. Uh, <laughs> and uh, seeing if I was interested in coming back to the hobby and stuff. And I was looking for Orc content, but there didn't seem to be all that very much Orc content out there. Um, and then um, this new channel came up, Six Plus Devo, and he started doing all this Orc related stuff, and I was like, oh yeah, I like this. And he was saying himself about how he had started off because he found a lack of Orc content out there. Like, there's some, but not very much. So he started making content himself and it sort of inspired me. I thought, well, if he can do it, I can do it too. Um, you know, not to uh, put Steve-O's content down. Steve-O's channel is my favorite uh, alt channel out there. It's my favorite YouTube channel. Like, if anything he puts out, I'll watch. So it was watching him and thinking, well, I, I want to do something like this, but you know, put my own put my own taste on it. But like, he made me realize that, like, yeah, that's something you can do. Like, why not? Um, so I gave it a go. So Steve-O is the main inspiration for the channel, I suppose. Um, but then I wouldn't have done it without the backing of my friends. So I had um, my now girlfriend, uh, who was then, you know, just my good best friend, you know, um, and my other best friend. They were sort of all saying, and other people, all, all my friends, were basically saying, look, you know you should do this, you know, this is something you should do, because I'd obviously spoke to them about it, and they're like, you know, you should definitely give it a go, give it all you've got, well, you know, what you've got to lose, sort of thing. So, I was like, yeah, actually, I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm going to do it, because I want to make it into, and this is sort of going into question three now, which is, where would you like to see your channel in the next five years? I basically wanted to um, make a channel that I could make a name for myself, and then I can start collaborating with others and start being part of something bigger, and doing you know, videos along the lines of some of those bigger um, 40k channels out there. I won't mention names, but they, you know who I'm talking about. Some of them bigger channels where they've got beautiful studios and stuff like that. I want to start getting involved. I want to start doing that sort of thing. I want to start having my own products as well. You know, I've started my own products. So I've got that on the way. So that's one of the things. But I just want to see my channel grow, um, become more involved in the community. Like I've got a community I'm part of. I uh, co run, although I'm a bit slack on it, the uh, 40k Orc community, um, which is run by 6 Plus Stevo, uh, Scarnia, and uh, the Hobby Git. And uh, they have other aliases too. <laughs> um, it's just <laughs> Plastic Cut Gaming is Scarnia, and uh, the Hobby Git uh, is also known as Dim. So there you go. Um, but yeah. Us guys, we run a community together, um, so I want to see that expand. I want to see uh, collaborations with the other members of the community that have made uh, YouTube channels. So off the back of Steve-O inspiring me to make a channel, other people have been inspired to make a channel, which has been 
the biggest reward out of it is knowing that you're passing it on, that you're actually making people go, do you know what, I'll have a go. Um, so yeah, I like that. And, you know, Steve-O introduced me to Scania as well. And Scania's been around for ages and he's introduced loads of people to the game. Um, and he's crack up funny. So hopefully me and Scar are gonna have some games because he lives in Ireland, I live in Ireland. He's in Dublin, if you couldn't tell by his accent. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm hoping to do with the channel, just expand, push out more stuff, um, get involved in more collaborations. I really like collaborating. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanna do, just grow and get more kits so I can actually produce better videos because I'm doing all this from my phone. <laughs> So that's sort of like my immediate goal, get that, and then progress and grow and grow. Yeah. Hmm. Question number four is basically asking any advice that you would give to somebody that was coming new to YouTube, a noob in the YouTube phenomenon. Well, what I would say is certainly record a load of stuff before you publish it. So get yourself a good backlog of content properly edited and everything, uh, upload it to YouTube even, but set it as private and see what you think of it, see if you like it, see if you like your format, play around with it. You know, experiment and stuff before you actually have any urge to sort of go publishing things. That's what I would say is, you know, have a good go first. And then once you've found the format that you like, actually build a, a sort of a, a library of videos Maybe ones that obviously, if you're doing a news channel, that's not really going to be viable. But if you're if you're doing a channel that is painting guide, building guide, converting, or build alongs with yourself or law and stuff like that, record it all first, uh, or not all, but a good chunk of it, and then you've got a bunch of episodes that you've got ready to put out. So once your channel gets rolling and you start getting busy, corresponding with people, emailing, being part of groups, and all that sort of stuff. All of that becomes very um, challenging to keep up with and produce videos and it can it can sap your creativity as well like so really set yourself out a certain time maybe to do videos but try and get ahead of the race that's the main thing I think that's my biggest advice that I would give to anyone get ahead of the race and get active in a community that's the other thing too communities like Idic Beer um, his 40k uh, community there is great place where you can um, meet other video creators and people that watch the content of course as well um, it's growing it's massive and it's a really great place so check that out and of course the before mentioned uh, 40k or community which I co-run so go and check them out and there are links to the guys videos that I've talked about in the description and thanks for tuning in guys see you in the next video and thanks to Spud for all this and uh, yeah, enough said.